assalamu alaikum welcome students uh, in the last lecture uh, we started the topic of translational uh, mechanical system transfer function uh, we discussed uh, the uh, force velocity and force displacement relationships of basic elements that exist in the mechanical system uh, uh, and then we present the electrical mechanical system analogies uh, uh, we then solve a simple problem related to translational mechanical system uh, now let's uh, find out the transfer function of mechanical system with two degree of freedom degree of freedom uh, means uh, the number of independent uh, motions in the system as you can see in the previous problem uh, as we did in the last lecture, the number of independent motion is only one, since only this mass is displaced. Now let's uh, do a problem with two degree of freedom. Question is, find uh, the transfer function uh, x2 of s by f of s for this system, system shown below. System is a uh, And this represents the surface at which the masses M1 and M2 are present. We can also say it as uh, the reference node. This is K1. Uh, this is B3. This is K2. This is K3. And the friction between surface and mass M1 is B1. And friction between mass M2 and the surface is B2. As friction can be modeled as the damper. Mostly the independent motion is marked as uh, uh, marked over masses in the system. Here you can see if I uh, uh, stop this or hold this mass with the hand, but uh, and I start moving this mass, then this mass is movable. Similarly, if I hold this mass. Uh, with my hand and start uh, displacing this mass then this mass can also be displaced towards positive or negative x-axis so we can say uh, in this system uh, uh, th this uh, system is of two degree of freedom system and we can represent this system with, uh, with uh, two differential equation the number of degree of freedom is equal to the uh, number of uh, differential equation that we, we should make we must make uh, to represent uh, that system so first drawing equivalent uh, network for this system 
as we did in the previous problem here uh, we are applying force at mass m1 or i can say i am applying force at node x1 so as we discussed force can be represented by a voltage uh, so i am making a voltage source uh, force f is applied at node x1 uh, and at this node mass is connected and we said earlier that the one end of the mass is always at reference no matter where it is placed so one end of the mass is connected at node uh, x and other end is connected uh, to the reference one end of this k1 is connected to the mass which is at node x1 and another end is connected to the reference so here i'm drawing this k1 and this is uh, the b1 which is the friction between mass m1 and b1 so i can say one end of this b one is connected to the node x1 and another end is connected to the reference so here we have b1 now this b3 and k2 they both are there one end is connected to x1 and another end is connected to x2 so we will draw them like this This is B3 and K2. Now, we reached at mass M2. So mass is always connected between non-reference node and the reference node. And then this B2 between x2 and reference similarly this k3 between x2 and reference so k3 and b2 now this is the uh, equivalent network for the uh, given mechanical system this uh, this whole node uh, uh, represent x1 and this whole node represents x2 this is x1 and this is x2 uh, this is uh, b2 now writing equation of motion at x1 writing equation of motion at x1 so f o of t is equals to uh, force o uh, due to this force is uh, displacing mass m1 k1 b1 and these two system as uh, applying kcl we will get the same result force that is flowing from uh, towards this node is equals to the force due to this uh, mass this mass which is away from the node and this is a uh, force due to spring k1 which is away from the node and force due to this d1 which is away from the node and similarly for k2 and b3 as in as kcl is uh, as K, we can state kcl as forces or current towards the node is equals to the current away from the node so writing it down force uh, applied force uh, is equal to m1 d square x1 dt square plus uh, b1 dx1 over dt plus a force due to this damper and force due to this spring which is k 
and they are connected between uh, non reference node x1 and reference node and now for these two uh, elements uh, since they are connected between x1 and x2 and the net force is applied uh, net force or net current is flowing in this direction is it, it's our assumption so we should write k2 x1 minus x2 and similarly b3 d of dt x1 minus x2 so the additional terms are b3 d over dt uh, x1 minus x2 plus uh, k2 uh, x1 minus x2 so this is uh, our equation 1 taking Laplace transform on both sides I think you guys can solve uh, this equation so I am uh, leaving this part so writing equation of motion at x2 so I, now I am writing equation of motion at x2 the force uh, towards node x2 are force due to k2 and b3 and forces away from the node are these forces so we can equate these two forces to be equal to these three forces so force due to k2 uh, uh, is k2 x1 minus x2 uh, plus force due to the damper uh, B3 is X1 minus X2. Uh, B3 D of DT X1 minus X2 is equals to force due to this mass M2, this B2 and this K3. So M2 D square X2 over DT square plus uh, b2 dx2 over dt plus k3 uh, x2 this makes our equation number two uh, now we can solve these two equation by first taking laplace transform on both side of these two equation to arrive at the s domain equation and then the then we can solve the resulting equation uh, to find the cancer function x2 over f so i think you guys can solve uh, these two equation now uh, let's consider a uh, a system with three degree of freedom uh, question is uh, right but do not solve the equation of motion for the mechanical system shown below so I am drawing the circuit or the system M1 this is spring M2 and the applied force
this mass uh, M3 is placed over mass M1 and M2. So here I can say the I can uh, represent this motion as x1, this motion as x2, and this motion as x3. Mostly independent motions are uh, marred over masses. Uh, so since we have three masses here, so we must uh, write three different three differential equation to represent this mechanical system. These two masses are placed over the surface. This is K1, this is K2, and friction between M1 and M3 is B3, and friction between M2 and M3 is uh, B4, friction between M1 and surface is B1, and friction between M2 and surface is B2. So this is our mechanical system. We have to write the equation of motion at x1, x2 and x3 for this mechanical system. So let's start drawing the equivalent network. Drawing equivalent network. Uh, for the system so uh, it's better to start drawing the circuit uh, from the node where the force is applied so first I am I will draw the node x2 since the applied force is at node x2 so applied force Uh, F2 node X2 uh, mass M2 is present between node X2 and M2 and at this node uh, the, uh, the damper B2 is present between node X2 and the reference since it is between mass M2 and the reference. So I am drawing B2 between node and reference node. B2 and uh, this uh, spring is uh, present in between two masses or I can say between node X2 and X1. So K2. This is node x2 and now we arrive at node x1 now at node x1 mass m1 is present uh, which is in between node and reference node so m1 between node and reference node uh, and at this node k1 is present between node and reference node and b1 is present between node and reference node so I'm drawing K1 and B1 in parallel with M1. K1 and uh, B1. And now oh, at node X1, we have another element B3, which is in between X1 and X3. So I am drawing B3, now we arrive at node X3 and, and at X3 there is a mass in between uh, non-reference node X3 and reference node as uh, I said earlier mass will or one end of mass is always be at uh, the reference node no matter where the physically where it is physically placed in the network so m3 
in between uh, node x3 and b3 i think this is b3 b3 now uh, at node x3 there is one additional element b4 is present which is uh, in between node x3 and x2 here this is node x3 this is uh, x1 and this node is x2 so i will draw this element uh, b4 from node x2 till node x3 so this is our equivalent network uh, this is i am marking these nodes this is x1 this is x2 oh, sorry this is x2, this is x1, and this is x3. Now, writing equation of motion at x2, x1, and x3. So, writing equation of motion at x1. Uh, at x1, the applied force... Uh, which is towards the node is is equals to the force which is away from the node uh, due to mass m2 b2 and k2 and uh, the last element b4 since all these uh, one and of all these uh, elements uh, are connected to the node x2 so f of t is equals to force due to mass m2 f of t is equals to m2 d square x2 over dt square uh, plus b2 dx2 over dt uh, plus uh, k2 uh, now for k2 it is connected in between x2 and x1 so k2 x2 minus uh, x1 and similarly for b4 it is connected in between x2 minus x3 so b3 d of dt uh, x2 minus x3 so this is our equation number one now writing equation of motion at this node which is x1 uh, writing equation of motion at x1 so at x1 uh, the force uh, due to this this k2 is towards the node and force due to these elements are away from the node so we can equate these forces so k2 uh, x2 minus x1 is equals to k2 x2 minus x1 is equals to m1 uh, x1 and k1 b1 and b3 force is due to these elements so m1 d square x1 over dt square plus uh, b1 dx1 over dt plus k1 x1 plus b3 d over dt uh, x1 minus x3 this is equation number two force due to m1 k1 b1 and b3 this b3 is connected between x1 and x3 so i wrote uh, this uh, force as like this x1 minus x3 uh, now uh, writing equation of motion at node x3 the last node writing equation of motion at x3 uh, now at x3 the force that is flowing towards node is due to b3 and uh, also force uh, due to this uh, b4 
they are flowing uh, towards the node and there is only one force which is away from the node x3 so we can equate equate these forces this is reference node i forgot to mark it now uh, b3 d over dt uh, x1 minus x3 plus d4 d over dt x2 minus x3 is equal to m3 d square x3 over dt square this is our equation number three so these are the equation of motion at uh, node x1 x2 and x3 now you can solve uh, these uh, three equation if uh, you were asked to find the transfer function uh, it is now just a mathematical problem now let's move our discussion to rotational mechanical systems uh, here since the system is still uh, mechanical uh, the basic elements will remain the same but instead of uh, displacing them linearly, uh, we now will rotate the mechanical system. So we will write torque angular velocity and uh, torque uh, angular displacement equations for the basic elements instead of force velocity and force displacement equation as we wrote for this system. Now, so, so these uh, equations are... Uh, component uh, torque uh, I am writing in short angular velocity velocity relation and torque dash uh, angular displacement relation for a spring I can write T of T torque in time domain equals to K 0 to T omega tau theta or T of T is equals to K theta of t this is theta of t this which is angular displacement and this omega of tau which it is the angular velocity for a uh, damper you can write t of t equals to b omega t or t of t is equals to b theta of dt for uh, inertia mass is represented by inertia in rotational systems uh, you guys are more familiar with this uh, element t of t is equals to j d omega of t dt or light torque equals to j d square theta of t by dt square this j is the inertia so these are the uh, equations uh, these are the torque velocity or uh, torque uh, velocity and torque displacement equations for the basic elements uh, we can create uh, the same analogy between electrical and rotational mechanical system variables as we did for translational mechanical systems uh, from these equation I can write the following analogies one is 
torque is equivalent to voltage uh, second is uh, angular velocity is equivalent to current third is angular displacement is equivalent equivalent to charge and fourth is a spring is equivalent to capacitor and uh, damper is equivalent to resistor and the last point inertia is equivalent to uh, inductor you can write all these analogies uh, by comparing these equations or these equations with the electrical uh, network equations uh, you can do this on your own and you will arrive uh, uh, to these statements torque is equivalent to voltage uh, in translational system uh, force was uh, equivalent to voltage angular velocity is equivalent to current angular displacement is equivalent to charge and so on so forth now uh, let's do a problem related to the rotational system question is fine the transfer function theta 2 of s by d of s for the rotational system shown below so here we have a uh, uh, rotational uh, rod which is rotating in between uh, the two bearings here the bearings are connected set of bearings are connected at this end and another set of bearing is connected at this end and I can say uh, there is a torsion at this end uh, which uh, divide this uh, which divides the initial of this whole rod into two let uh, mark these inertia as j1 and j2 from this point applied torque is at this inertia and so the rotation at this end will be theta1 we can assume it and the rotation at this inertia will be theta 2 at this end of the rod uh, let's say the friction between this set of bearing and j1 is 
B1 and friction between J2, this set of bearing and J2 is B2. Uh, now we are interested in finding the uh, final displacement uh, at this end of the rod when torque is applied at this end. So first uh, uh, draw the schematic of uh, this figure and then we will draw uh, the equivalent network from schematic. So first drawing the uh, since it is a physical system, so as we discussed in chapter one, we always uh, uh, we always draw the schematic of the physical system first before drawing uh, any circuit or equivalent network uh, or whatever is needed. So first drawing schematic. Uh, drawing. schematic so we can draw it like this this bearing is in between node and reference node here it is j1 and uh, between j1 and j2 is torsion we can model the torsion as spring k again j2 and the bearing in between j2 and reference node so this is j1 this is j2 bearing friction b1 bearing friction b2 and this is uh, the torsion which can be modeled as spring applied force is at j1 and rotation is theta1 we can uh, mark this uh, rotation at this end also or we can mark this uh, rotation at this end it makes no difference so applied torque is at theta 1 and uh, we are interested in finding the rotation at this end now drawing a equivalent network uh, from this schematic drawing equivalent network so applied a torque is at theta 1 node so we will start from theta 1 applied torque torque can be modeled as voltage source this represents node theta 1 and at node theta 1 here we have inertia j between node and reference node and uh, at this uh, theta 1 node we have a bearing in between theta 1 and reference so I am drawing it in parallel with j1 uh, sorry B1. Now this is spring K or torsion is in between theta 1 and theta 2. So drawing in the circuit like this K. Now we arrive at node X2. So and at node X2 we have uh, the inertia connected in between node and reference node and this B2 is in parallel with this J2. This represent the reference node, and uh, this represents a uh, node X one, and this represents node X two. So now writing a equation of motion uh, by using the torque displacement equation writing at x1 applied torque which is towards the node 
is equivalent to the torque due to J1 away from the node. Uh, this B1 and this K. So, sorry, this is uh, actually they are theta1 and theta2. I'm sorry. So, torque is applied torque is J1 D square theta1 dt square plus uh, b1 d theta1 by dt plus k theta1 minus theta2 this is equation number one uh, and at, at x2 uh, we can write the force towards theta2 node which is due to k is equivalent to force away from the node and force away from the node which is due to j2 and b2 so k theta 1 minus theta 2 equals to j2 d square t2 oh, theta 2 dt square plus b2 d theta 2 by dt this represents equation number 2 now we can uh, uh, convert these equations in s domain and we can find out uh, theta 2 over t, theta 2 of s over t of s, this desired transfer function by solving them simultaneously. So this will be your homework as it is uh, now a mathematical uh, problem. Uh, now let's uh, end our lecture here. Uh, uh, we will continue this topic uh, from here in the next lecture. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.